Her name is Cindy Moon, and for the last nine years has been locked in a bunker. And I'm pretty sure many of you know the rest. Maybe. She had her whole future ahead of her, but her mom wanted more. She wouldn't say she was demanding, but she expected a lot from her. She made her go to museum for extra credit and got bit by a radioactive spider. She had powers that were really scary and didn't know how to control them, and expected the worst from her parents. But they wanted to help her. And it was then that at that moment she began to understand her mother better. And a weird old man named Ezekiel came to help her and he did. Trained her in martial arts, got used to her powers, maybe got used to it a bit too much, and she turned out to be a chosen one. Also, spider hunting vampire, but we'll get to that later. And because of that, was locked in a secret bunker alone for 10 years, but handled it like a champion. She even figured out a passcode to get out early, but decided not to because, again, spider hunting vampire, but we'll get to that later. And now fast forward 10 years, comic book time. Brought up a Spider-Man who had the same power she had, and that Spider-Hunting Vampire? Yeah, he's dead now. Ezekiel? Also dead. And became the one and only Silk. But things changed. She missed her chance to go to college, her family went missing, and was left in a world that changed except for her. I guess you could say she was also angry. Not just angry she lost 10 years she can never get back, or the old man who put her there died, and will never get a chance to confront him, she was just angry. But she made friends, made some enemies, became an investigative reporter, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and found her family again. If not, even more. And Marvel has no idea what to do with her? Fuck the expectations, I'm the Cindy Moon first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number one, written by Dan Slott during the original Sin Marvel event, written by Jason Aaron during the time in which the Watcher is murdered and the orb reveals the sins of every hero and villain of the Marvel Universe, changing the landscape forever. Honestly, that's the only thing, and I don't have the mental or brain capacity to cover that, and at that time, Peter Parker was also the CEO of Parker Industries, I think, that, don't quote me on that, and before then, became or was possessed by Otto Octavius, or Otto possessed his body and became Spider-Man, which was also written by Dan Slott, and this stuff, but again, we don't talk about it. And then Spider-Man freed her, and she became Silk, and uh... My eyes! We don't talk about it. Powers and abilities. She has all the powers Spider-Man has, and not even more. She can make webs from the tips of her fingers, her webs can always make anything, and clothes, items, even with boxing gloves. And not only has the spider sense, but also a silk sense. Which, not to be confused, the spider sense only warns Peter that danger is present, but it's up to Peter to react accordingly. Silk sense, on the other hand, not only warns her of the danger, but tells her where the danger exactly and allows the rod to move independently from her mind, avoiding that danger. And if that's confusing, well, yes, yeah, confusing me too. Her silk sense adds spider sense on overdrive, or my definition, spider ultra instinct. She also has an eidetic memory, so that's kind of cool. And also the claws, but barely uses them. And a lot of her popularity is connected to the massive comic event Spider-Verse. The 2015 event also written by Dan Slott, in which the many versions of Spider-Man team up to stop the inheritors from killing every Spider-Man. An event was so popular it became its own movie in which I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with. And there's a lot that goes on, but I don't have a lot of time to talk about it or want to, so take a take a look if you want. I, I don't care. And a fun fact about the event is that it wasn't the first time Dan Slott played with the idea of a Spider-Verse, nor was it the first time Marvel tried to introduce the concept of it, which was also introduced in the 90s anime series. But the idea really took off in the video game, which was also written by Dan Slott, Shattered Dimensions. And I played the game, and honestly, my 12 year old brain thought this was one of my favorite Spider Man games because you don't only get to play as one Spider Man, but four from different dimensions with their own unique abilities. And oh my god, he's so goddamn cool! And 
Even Dan Slott loved the idea so much that it inspired him to create the Spider-Man's events four years later. And I guess my own critic of the games, or game or games, is how well, or, and I guess my own critic of the game is well, how Spider-Man's powers work because he shouldn't be able to make web weapons from his web shooters, or web hammers, or web fists, or throwing objects from walls with his webs, or in the Edge of Time game, which was written by Peter David, has this thing called Hypersense, which is just an OP dodge attack skill, which I'm pretty sure his spider sense doesn't work like that, but wait, hold up. Able to dodge an attack like Ultra Instinct, which surprisingly is similar to Peter's in the Edge of Time game, web weapons, and boxing gloves, like Peter in Shattered Dimensions. Hold up, did Dan slot base her powers from the video games? Right, and now that I covered her origins and stuff, let's head to the Robbie Thompson run. What does Cindy do now? The Spider-Verse is over, she's free. During the spiny hunting vampires after her, gone. The man who imprisoned her, also gone. She's safe now, so she chooses to be a hero. Not because she wants to, but this is the only thing she has going for her. And she has a job, but only took it to find her family. And being in the bunker for so long became more straightforward. And she was conflicted. Maybe it was better to go back in the bunker because even though she's free, she's alone. Angry because after 10 years, the opportunity she had before, gone. Her family is gone without a trace, a D-list villain who just emerges constantly annoys her, and many issues she avoided for 10 years. And yeah, it sucks. What is Silk's purpose in a world that has almost moved on without her? A world with so many heroes with so many advancements, where exactly does Cindy Moon fit into all of this? Accepting to Oxford, a brother who loved her and bonded over how they both hated white chocolate, a boyfriend who truly loved her, and she had a bright future all taken away because of a radioactive spider. And before then, she had an argument with her parents or with her mom on what was best for her, and was mad at them for assuming what they knew what was best for her, for her life, and told them, I hate you. Scared, frightened, the anger that she had was gone, and the way her powers helped her to truly understand them. Not as parents who demanded so much from her, but as people who were afraid of losing their only daughter. And if I were a parent who found my kid had powers, I'd be scared out of my mind. She could have been a mutant, or an inhuman, and if you've been keeping up with recent Marvel events or past events in the Marvel Universe, yeah, that would suck. And they were put into a position where they had to put their trust to a strange old man who had almost sinister, if not suspicious intentions, but in a way helped and trained her. Helped her to get used to her powers, but wanted to lock her up because again, goddamn spider hunting vampire would go after her. I never told her when she will get out, or if she will get out. And when she got out, you know what else happened? Her ex-boyfriend got engaged. And she's angry because all those 10 years she was in the bunker? For nothing. And the man who had the one lead to where her family is, accidentally killed by Black Cat, and all that anger from the last few days boils up. And yeah, really pissed. And back to square one. And this moment, this one moment made me fall in love with her as a character. Freedom is hard. Also the world is ending, so that's a thing. And she manages to find her brother. She didn't know what to say, and the only two words she could say, I'm sorry.
But it turns out that the world wasn't ending, but then again, it turned into this thing called Battle World, and then there was a whole thing with Doctor Doom taking over, and yeah, that's another superhero event that I don't want to talk about. So, things changed. For one, the world did it end. It got remade, but we don't talk about that. She's still a hero, but also a villain, but also an undercover agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. while also maintaining a job at a news station, and she's burning herself out. She does get therapy for her issues, however, the anger from her previous run is still there, and she's still very, very, very much angry. That the bunker made her feel alone, angry that the Goblin Gang drugged her brother, angry that no one, no one seems to be giving her a chance to trust her or let things play out in her own way. And working for S.H.I.E.L.D. because they can help her find her parents. But no one seems to trust her. Her handler doesn't trust her. They got the person she's infiltrating doesn't trust her. Spider-Man doesn't really trust her either. And on top of it, almost killed a guy who kidnapped her brother, drugged him, drugged a bunch of kids, drugged her, and she admits to a therapist that she wanted to kill him, and I don't blame her. Because in a way, it almost parallels what happened to her. Man comes in promising them safety, explicitly trusts to get what they want, and almost leading them to be unseen if not punished. Sound familiar? I noticed in a few panels she asked them, why is the door closed? as if she feels she's being punished, trapped. And for every time, they tell her it's not locked and she can leave any time. When Cindy and Black Cat got stuck in one heist, they had an the opportunity to talk, not as co-workers, but as people. They told her of her history and she asked her, what do you dream? The question of vulnerability before them, and at the moment you realize, or Silk realizes, Black Cat isn't just a villain. They are essentially two sides of the same coin. Both women who lost everything, no one understands them. Both angry that those closer to them don't trust them, betray them. And that sucks. And they didn't become partners, but people who trusted each other. That is until Felicia found out she was an undercover agent and was pissed. And I don't think she was really mad she sold her out to S.H.I.E.L.D., but the fact she made it personal. That she trusted her, bonded with her, and used all of that as a tool against her. And yeah, out of this whole experience, Cindy is still angry, but why should she be? Why is she still angry? Because her anger was the only thing she has. It made her feel less alone, and it made her feel less afraid, and without that anger, she has to face her fears and anxieties, but she's not. And, and with help, she finds her family again. And after finding her family back, it's stronger than her anger. And maybe that's why the clone conspiracy was a bit weird to me. Also, another fun fact, for a majority of the Silk variant covers, or official covers, were actually designed by Helen Shin, who not only did the variant covers or covers for Silk, but is also the production designer for Sony Animations. However, also another fun fact by Helen Shin is she is also a she fan. Since I'm also a she fan, and she is also one of my favorite shows, and considering I did make a video maybe a long time ago, and made concept art, well, not concept art, but more fan arts of She-Ra. She is also followed by Molly Ostertag. And if you don't know who Molly Ostertag is, she is the creator of The Girl by the Sea, an independent graphic novel, also one of the writers of The Owl House, for her episodes Enchanting the Grom Knight and Yesterday's Lies. And she is also married by Nate Stevenson, who you may know as the creator of She-Ra and the Princess of Power on Netflix and also the creator of Nimona, which is also being adapted 
into the movie, which by the time this video releases may or may have already been released. Also, Rainbow Rowell, who is also writing She-Hulk, and there, there was no point. I, I, I just thought this is really cool. So, uh, yeah, really cool. Also, before Cindy Moon was actually officially introduced, there were actually some costume designs for her first, for her first outfit. In the first initial concept designs, Dan Solomon described her as maker Asian heritage, which actually seemed very fake. However, aside from that, there are actually some more interesting designs in one of her TPBs, which, and there were actually some more thought put into these designs rather than the one we actually got. But honestly, I'm glad she didn't have this design for long. One of the animals from Across the Spider-Verse, Chris Anka, actually made a variant cover of Silk in one of her runs. And if you don't know who Chris Anka is, he is one of the animators who designed Miguel O'Hara in, in the film. And you may know him as the OH MY GOD HE'S SO GODDAMN COOL! Or you may just know Chris Anka as the guy who made the butch Anya. Who made this Anya design. Yeah. You find him on Twitter, give him a follow. And no, I'm not being supported by him, but I, I wish I was. At this point in the story, Cindy has everything she has ever wanted, if not even more. She has her family back, they have a nice place, a job that pays her well, if not also fulfilling, and also reconnecting with her ex, who turns out to be a specter, ghost, hero, but I, it, it's complicated. And she's happy. She should feel happy. Then why? Is she being distant to them again? And this whole arc was weird to me because this is just one of those arcs that feels almost out of place, if not bizarre, but also in a sense necessary. If you were given the opportunity to talk to a dead loved one again, what would you say? If you were allowed to talk to him again, see anything for 15 minutes, even more or less, what would you do? What would you say? What would you feel? And that's what the clone conspiracy tie-in asks. If Cindy is overwhelmed because she has everything back, family, friends, a life, yet instead of spending more time with them, she distances herself even more. And having everything back is not just scary, but overwhelming, given she lost everything but gave it, but was given it back. And her boss is given back his family, his niece, his wife, who was also Spider-Woman, but we don't talk about that. And that in any given moment, the person you cherish most will be gone again. And for a time, her ex-boyfriend was alive. Now she has everything back, what would she feel? What would she say? That her anger kept her coming along with her fear and loneliness. Can she deserve to be happy? Yeah, quite a story. And in the very few last issues, she has to deconstruct, if not look into herself. What can she do? What does Cindy want to do? Because the source of her anger wasn't about her powers, or the bunker, or her mom, or her trust issues. She was just angry. And she didn't know what to do or where to bring that anger out, and that scared her. And after everything happened to her, it goes back to that one question. What does she want to do? And she's also given her freedom again. And she's free. And first time, she doesn't even know what to do with that freedom. She doesn't know what her experiences or what her story meant. So what's the secret to keeping it in the air aside from, you know, keeping it away from trees? Grandma always told me 
a kite wants to fly. So the first step is you have to give it enough rope so it can see. In Cindy's whole arc, her whole story is surrounded on freedom, if not also anger. She always desired to be on her own separate from her mother, and when her powers came, it helped her understand them, yet they also imprisoned her. She was angry at everything, at Morlun, Ezekiel, herself, but she was free, and she had no idea where to vent that anger. And for heroes, the easiest thing to do to vent was, well, punch the shit out of villains. But what she really needed was to talk it out. Now she doesn't need to be angry anymore, and she just needed distance. Enough distance to be free and find herself. And that she doesn't need to be always angry. Sure, her anger will always still be a part of her, but she can be happy. I don't have much to say about the other side stories. I just probably can only say that I wish the Spider Woman story did more for Sydney 65 and that spider fly effect was uh, ambitiously pointless. So, yeah. So, does Marvel still want her? I couldn't find any actual sales data on her issues or traits, but given Marvel still invests making meanies about her, it tells me she is popular that they still want to make more stories about her, and people are still interested with her since the first appearance uh, since nine years ago, and oh my god. I feel old because I was like 16 when I first learned about her from a comic store in video, and now I'm 24, and her last ongoing was... Oh. And, uh, yeah, she also did have a lot of ventures. She teamed up with, uh, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Deadpool. She also was an agent of Atlas, and also teamed up recently with, well, she also teamed up with Miss Marvel, and also an issue in Gwenpool. And I think she got her job back working with JJ again. I think that, that don't quote me on that. And Silk's boyfriend who was a ghost, they broke up, I think, or he's dead again. I, I, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that either. And uh, she's dating again. And uh, yikes. Also, Silk and Black Cat, I, they made up. And are friends again. And, and uh, yeah, you'll see the karaoke. And I was also in one story written by Jeremy Holt, which everyone should check out. And, uh, she has her own television series and... Oh! The writer strike halted the show? Ah. And, uh... According to the rest of my notes, no other plans for an ongoing, or none that I can find, but... I think she's fine for now, but... I'm worried. Marvel brought a Korean American character to their peak and they don't know what to do with her. And that's saying something, given most of not many superheroes consist of white men, while I barely remember any Asian characters other than Shang-Chi, and the recent fridging death of Muslim hero Kamala Khan, I'm conflicted about it. Cause I want her story to continue, I want her to have an ongoing, but I understand that after her run ended with Robbie Thompson, and how her story fits close, what do you do with a character that achieved self-actualization? That's a problem because comic book characters, even superheroes, need internal conflict to keep the source going. And well, I want to write Silk, so, so here's my pitch. I know if I go into too much detail, I can't work on it again, so I'll keep it big. I ask myself, Silk isn't perfect. She's happy for now, but heroes, villains, people, 
will never ever be truly happy. Trust me, I know. Heroes, villains, people, they progress, regress, progress again, progress even more, progress even more, or sometimes regress so bad that we get Zebo Spider Man. But joking aside, Silk's anger will always be a part of her. The anger she felt from being alone, from being untrusted, being understood, from being misunderstood, betrayed, hurt, will never go away. And her anger hides her fear from all that pain. What does Silk want to do? Because again, what did she see doing in the future? What did she see doing in 10 years? Will she be married? Will she have kids? Will she still be a hero? Will she still want to be a hero? Can she still be a hero? To make her powers mean something, her anger means something, her fear to mean something that she didn't spend the time in that bunker for nothing. She doesn't want to be alone. She she fears being alone. And what's the thing she so desperately wants now that is so simple? Fighting. But also scary. Who is Cindy Moon? She is not She is not a sex object. She's not a throwaway ex of Spider-Man. She's a hero. A superhero. A reporter. A gamer. A Pokemon fan, a K-pop fan, a Sailor Moon fan, a woman who embraces her anger to hide the anxieties and fears of being alone. The only power she did not want, but learned to accept them. And she just needed distance and needed to be free to discover things about herself. And going back to the Sailor Moon thing, it kind of just clicked for me. And going back to the Sailor Moon thing, it kind of just clicked for me. But both main characters. Oh, Sailor Moon and Cindy Moon are similar. I mean, aside from sharing the same last name, in Sailor Moon, Sagi is forced to... Sagi is forced upon responsibility of being the leader of the Sailor Scouts. The power to fight evil, to be their soldier, but never you've given the opportunity to find autonomy for herself, and instead to continue, and instead continue to serve an institution that dehumanizes her and benefits from her own suffering. Cindy Moon is also given amazing powers and responsibilities in the same way in prison robbed of the freedom to choose her own future and given a promise to be given a cure if she stayed in the bunker. But never happened, forced to give little power she had left and huh. uh, I don't know how to end this video, so although please give an ongoing and for the Silk fans out there, or the people who are interested in her stories, please support her new meaning. Buy her previous trades. Show Marvel we care about this hero. Show them that we want more stories of her. Show Marvel that we want more amazing, fantastical, if not suspenseful adventures of her. That we want her. Stay true to her. Hey, so you made it to the end. Congratulations. For those that stuck to the end, usually this is part where I should. I don't know. Cause after all this time, I found out that I just need myself to be proud. So I'll shout it to myself. Don't need no one else. Push your limits to a place that only you can go to. So even with this horrible face, I'm still fighting on. Cause I realize